Hello, Chris Hetzler here again, and today we're going to be uh, presenting a video to you on how to configure Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 for use uh, with Connector for Microsoft Dynamics. So the first step, after you download uh, the Connector MSI from Partner Source and also the Dynamics AX 2012 XPO that you need to import uh, from Partner Source, they're located on the on the same page is to import that XPO into Dynamics AX 2012. So as you can see, we're in AX 2012 here. I'm going to press Control D uh, to bring up the development environment. And then go into the AOT and click Import. I'm going to browse to that XPO that I've downloaded, and its name is Connector, uh, excuse me, Dynamics Connector .xpo. This is right on my desktop, so I'll go ahead and choose to open. I'm going to uncheck the box for deleting sub-elements. Go ahead and click OK. It's going to do a little bit of analysis on that XPO. And the first uh, message I'm going to get is to say that uh, one of the macros in the XPO or is already contained uh, within AX. I'm going to go ahead and say yes to all uh, in this dialog. And then we'll pause the recording while the importing actually takes place. So as you can see, uh, the importation has completed, but I do have uh, eight errors that occurred uh, because of some macros that aren't lining up. So we'll go ahead and do a code merge on those. I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate the first one, then I'm going to go ahead and pause it while I work, work through the others, but the process is identical uh, for all of them. We'll just open up our classes node and we'll look for that sales sales order underscore sales table class so we'll scroll down there's our sales sales order underscore sales table we'll go ahead and right click and then choose compare and we can compare to the lower layer any of the lower layers. In this case, we're just going to compare to the FPK layer. We'll just go to the class declaration. We'll see there's a difference in our class compared to the base one. We want to keep that. If we come down to the bottom, here's three, excuse me, four macros that are being declared in the FPK layer that aren't in the user layer. So we'll go ahead and get those moved up. So that's done. We'll go ahead and save that. And we'll go ahead and recompile. Now I'm going to pause uh, and work through some of the other errors uh, that we had. Now that I have the uh, code compiling cleanly, I'm going to go ahead and run the uh, Dynamics Connector Setup class. So I'll open up the Projects node go to the private project that was created when we imported the XPO. Uh, that's called Dynamics Connector. Open that up. If we scroll down to the bottom of the class list, we'll see the Dynamics Connector class. If we choose to open that, we'll see there's several methods in there. What we're interested in uh, is the run method, or excuse me, main. We want to go ahead and run that method. Now what that's going to do is set up uh, all the uh, custom services that are created in the XPO. It's going to put them on an enhanced port and set all the security and uh, connection information for them. Now you could do all this by hand uh, within both the AOT and the services set up in the AX client. However, we've created this class to do that for you. So I'll go ahead and run that class and, and while it's uh, working, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording again. Now that the uh, Dynamics Connector Setup class has completed running, we'll see uh, from the info log uh, that everything was created successfully and all the set setup was done successfully. So I can go ahead and close that, close out of my class editor, close out of the project, and actually I'm done now uh, in the development environment for AX as well. So just to take a, a couple of quick looks at what's actually been done inside of AX. If we come over uh, on the administration area, 
and go to setup come down to services and application integration framework where we'll, we'll explain, expand that node excuse me go to inbound ports and this will bring up a list of all the uh, information ports that are exposed right now and you'll see that that setup class has actually created the Dynamics Connector uh, default services port. It's an enhanced port which means that if you want uh, child roll-up type of uh, activities to be recorded and, and, and moved through connectors such as you know modifying a sales order line and having its headers last modified date time updated so we can pick up that update move that across same for modifying customer addresses uh, so if you change a customer address actually uh, signaling on the header that hey an address has been changed and we'll move all those uh, updates across you do need to use an enhanced port to enable change to honor the change tracking mechanism in SQL and we do that by default we create the enhanced port however you would need to go into SQL Server and enable change tracking on your own that process uh, has uh, very rich documentation out on the web and we have a link to that documentation from the connector documentation as well. We'll go ahead and close that. Also while we're in here uh, under periodic you'll see services and application integration framework and you'll see exceptions. When you're integrating data uh, from CRM into AX. If AX uh, throws an exception that we don't know about in the connector that we don't understand and, and can pro provide you a mediation for, uh, a lot of times you'll see the error message just says, please see the exception log for more details. Uh, this is typically the exception log that we're referring to there. So that uh, this is where you would come to look at those exceptions as they're occurring uh, in the AX AIF services. And with that, the configuration piece within uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX is completed. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of AX. And next, we're actually going to install Connector for Microsoft Dynamics. Now I'm actually going to pause the recording while I do this. Uh, there are several, or excuse me, there is another video in the series that actually talks about setting up Connector uh, and installing Connector. So once I have Connector installed, then I will uh, resume the recording and show you the configuration process for Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 within Connector. Now that uh, the Connector for Microsoft Dynamics installation has completed, I can go ahead and launch Connector. The first thing I'm going to be prompted to do uh, after Connector has been launched is to enter uh, my settings for the various systems I want to connect. Now because I installed the version for AX I'm going to not only get the AX 2012 adapter but I will also have the AX 2009 adapter. I'm going to have the legacy CRM adapter as well as the CRM 2011 adapter. Now I only need to configure AX 2012 and CRM 2011 in this case. So the first piece of information I need to provide uh, when configuring Dynamics AX 2012 is the AOS server name and that's uh, the same as the name of the machine that I am currently on because it is hosting the AOS. The document port and services port have defaulted for me. I didn't change those at all so I'm going to leave those as the AX defaults. Just enter the domain. The username that has access to those services, in this case it's just going to be administrator, and the password. Then I can go ahead and test those settings to make sure that they're uh, correct and that this user can actually connect. As you can see, uh, I get an error telling me that the test settings failed because I actually have to run the uh, Dynamics AX 2012 configuration utility first before I can actually do anything with this adapter. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and click on the link uh, to launch that utility. Again, it defaults the AOS server name uh, and the document and system services ports. Now it's important to note that this utility uh, will be connecting to the AX services as the user who's running it. As you can see, we have no place uh, to actually specify the user to connect as. So right now, I'm logged into this machine as the system admin, and that user does have access to those services. Uh, 
and that's going to go ahead and, and call up into the AX services on those ports and pull down the metadata about those services. Once that's happened, you'll see all of the services that are published on that Dynamics Connector default services port. And I'll go ahead and click Configure. And that's going to generate some metadata on the connector system uh, to present those services for mapping in, in the connector interface. Now once this process is done, uh, we can go ahead and click OK and close out of this configuration and select to configure uh, CRM 2011. So we move down to the CRM 2011 adapter. You can see we just need to supply the username in the form of domain username, the password, and then the URL uh, to the CRM discovery services. It's also important to note that for CRM, I actually need two different users uh, to configure when, while I'm configuring the adapter. One is the user to connect to CRM as. We'll call that the integration user. The other one is the CRM system administrator. Both of those users have already been set up in Active Directory and in, in CRM, so I just need to provide their information here. So in the uh, CRM 2011 adapter settings, I provide the integration user, who's going to be this uh, account. And their password. Now down here, I'm not using HTTPS, I'm just using regular HTTP, and I'm on the default port, so I don't need to supply any port information, so I just need the host name, which is this same machine. We'll go ahead and apply those settings, and we'll test them. Now as you can see, uh, we ran into an error here because there's no roles assigned for this uh, particular user and that's okay because the configuration utility is going to go ahead and set those up. So we'll go ahead and choose to uh, configure Dynamic CRM. And this is the CRM 2011 configuration utility. We'll click next on the welcome screen. And then we need to supply the CRM administrator credentials here. And we'll go ahead and uh, select the organizations. As you can see, I only have one set up. It's Contoso. The solution that I want uploaded uh, to that is the Dynamics AX solution. So I'll click Next. Now I have the option uh, to select any of any entities that I want to customize in the system, or that excuse me, that I want to integrate in the system, that I may have already created as custom entities, or that may be customized. For now, I just want to use the default ones that are. Uh, selected uh, for a base integration and I need to configure CRM completely so I can't skip any of the complete configuration steps which is what this checkbox is for. So let's say I've already done the complete setup and configuration for CRM and I only want to uh, generate the metadata that the connector system needs to integrate new custom entities. If that was the situation I would just uh, select to skip but in this case that's not what I'm doing. I, want, I need to do the full uh, customization. So I'll go ahead and click Next and click Configure and I'll pause the recording uh, while the configuration takes place. Now that the configuration utility for CRM has completed successfully I can go ahead and click Finish and test those settings again. And Now we can see that the testing of those settings was successful so I can hit OK Go ahead and close uh, the adapter settings window. And next I'll be prompted to create a new integration. Now I'm going to say from template. And I'm going to use the AX2012 to CRM2011 template. As you can see the application types for this integration default in for me based on that template. I'll go ahead and select my CEU company out of uh, Dynamics AX. And from CRM I'm going to select Contoso. We'll go ahead and click create.
And now that the integration has been created, uh, you can see all the default maps that have been installed for me, and their status is currently in inactive. So I could go ahead and choose to activate those maps in order and begin my integration. So that concludes how to install and configure Connector for Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and I look forward to uh, talking to the rest of you when I get a chance. Thanks a lot.